To begin with, here's an overview of the machine. This is the clean water tank. This is the dirty water tank. Always check this to make sure it's empty before starting to use the machine. There's a ping pong ball in here that is made to rise with the water level. If the tank is full, you'll notice a difference in the sound that the vacuum motor makes. You should immediately turn the vacuum off and dump the tank. To raise the scrubbing head for transportation to and from the sales floor, you'll simply push down on the pedal. This raises it. To lower it, you just bump this handle. Now it's on the ground. To raise or lower the squeegee, simply move that over, the squeegee will be down. Moving on, the water valve control is here. Turn it counterclockwise to turn the water valve on, clockwise to turn it off. This turns the vacuum motor on, this turns the brush motor on. The clear hose on the back is for the clean water tank. You'll be able to kind of decipher how much water is in the tank based on where you see the level here. This tank is almost empty. If you fill it up, the level will rise on the hose. This is the hose for the dirty water tank. Always make sure the cap is on before you start scrubbing because it will lose suction if it's not. Before taking the scrubber out onto the sales floor, make sure you've swept thoroughly. Otherwise, trash will get caught in the squeegee, leaving lines as you scrub. To begin scrubbing, first, check the dirty water tank to make sure it's empty. Make sure you seal the cap tightly, otherwise you will not get good suction. Next, fill the clean water tank. Do not remove this screen, otherwise debris can become trapped in the water lines. To transport onto the sales floor, make sure your pad is lifted by pushing down and raising it to either the first or second notch. Make sure the squeegee's up as well. Once on the sales floor, you can go ahead and put the brush on the floor. Do this by just bumping this lever forward. Next, put the squeegee on the floor. Next, you'll turn the water on, usually about three quarters of the way, counterclockwise to turn it on. Then you'll turn the vacuum motor on, and next turn the brush motor on. But as soon as you turn the brush on, start walking. Otherwise, the brush will leave a white mark on the floor if it sits there for too long. While using the scrubber, as you get to the end of an aisle, it can help to lessen the amount of water that's being used as you make the turn. If you're using too much water, it will leave a trail as you make your turn. So that's one good indication that you need to lessen the amount of water you're using as you're turning. Once you're going straight again, feel free to turn the water back up. When you finish scrubbing, Push down on the pedal to take the brush off the floor. Make sure the squeegee's in the upright position. 
Once you're in the back room, dump the scrubber by opening the dirty water hose into the mop sink. While you're dumping it, it's a good idea to go ahead and take the dirty water tank lid off, spray out the mesh there, and just spray the tank out in general. Try to find a safe place to store your charger, like a milk crate, to avoid potentially damaging it. To charge the scrubber, simply plug in the pigtail. Turn the charger on. Make sure you never adjust this switch. This is set from the factory for your specific type of battery. When it's done charging, hold both plastic pieces and pull them apart. This will ensure that the wires don't get pulled out of the connectors. To change out the pad in the front, you first need to start in the back here. Make sure the pad driver is on the ground. You do so by pushing the lever forward. Now that it's on the ground, you can tilt the machine back. Make sure while you're tilting it, you do not crush the plastic water valves on the squeegee. So tilt it all the way back. To remove the pad and pad driver, turn it counterclockwise. Counter that will release the pad. Next, you can unscrew the center lock by turning it counterclockwise. Pull this pad off, line up the new one. Sometimes you have to press them down around the edge in order to make it easier for the center lock to go back on. Just screw it on, then line the three studs up with the three egg-shaped holes on the brush motor. Next, turn it clockwise. Make sure it's locked in place. While scrubbing, if you notice the squeegees leaving streaks behind, it's most likely because trash can get stuck underneath the rubber. So while walking, just lift this up and bump the squeegee a couple times and it'll leave any pieces of trash behind and give you a clean pass with the squeegee again. Another thing to keep in mind the squeegee will leave streaks if you do not have enough water being put onto the floor. So make sure your water valve is turned on. If you've noticed a loss in suction from the machine, the first thing you're going to want to check is the level of the dirty water tank. If it's not been emptied, there's a ping pong ball in here that is made to rise with the water level. If the tank is full, you'll notice a difference in the sound that the vacuum motor makes. You should immediately turn the vacuum off and dump the tank. That would be the first place to start if you've lost suction. If that's empty, you'll want to check out the squeegee. Take this hose off and make sure that this slot in the squeegee is not full of trash. You'll follow it up. Make sure it's connected here to the main dirty water tank. If you've checked that the dirty water tank is empty and there's no obstructions going in the hose to the tank, lastly, you may want to check this ledge Water enters into the dirty water tank here, and sometimes debris will get lodged on this ledge. So what you need to do in order to remove it, is remove that hose and tilt the tank upwards. A lot of times, you'll actually see the debris in this hole here. 
You can also put a hose in there and spray it out. If you go in from this way, you can reach around the shield and spray up into the ledge with a hose and clean out the debris. Also, if you have a screwdriver, you can scrape out the debris from the ledge. Always remember though, if you do lift the tank, when you put it back down, you will have to reconnect the vacuum hose for it to function properly.